Hi, my name is Fevzi Hussein from ETV. We're here at the Mayfair Hotel in London to watch the premiere of Salute. Salute is a film about a group of very brave athletes who at the 1968 Olympics in Mexico showed solidarity to the black civil rights movement in America. Later on we'll be speaking to Tommy Smith himself and hopefully speaking to some of the other stars here tonight. When we turned to face the flags, both Tommy and John were behind me, and so I couldn't see what was happening. But uh, I knew that they'd, they'd actually gone through with their plans when a, a, a voice from up in the stand sang the American national anthem, and he got about four bars into the national anthem and then faded out to nothing. The stadium just went quiet. Those of you who from ETV, we're here representing British Turks, in front of me, I've got Simon Woolley, director of Operation Black Vote. Simon, why is the salute still significant today? It's very significant, Fevzi. You know, here we are in 2012, and uh, two weeks before the Olympic Games, on our soil, in our metropolis, and then we have an iconic figure, such as Tommy Smith, who talks on so many levels to so many people, not least that courageous act in 1968, when he, at the pinnacle of his career, Instead of uh, glorifying his own 200 meter victory, he said, this is not about me. This is about others. This is about those that are oppressed. This is about those that are racially abused. A silent, powerful gesture that 44 years later, we're still talking about it. Why is this salute so significant still today? I think the launch is significant today, mainly because, um, you know, in the time that I remembered it, um, I just started my own athletics career, and it was it was inspiring, what's the, you know, at the time, watching that, seeing that's happened. It sent a message to them automatically. Why is he his head bowed? Why is his fist in the air? This is an Olympic game, what is he doing? And they started a asking questions about that among themselves. And the answers they got was different. But the reason, re reasoning behind that podium was the same in their mind, freedom. It kind of made me reflect on the meeting I had with Dr. King. And I asked Dr. King, why would you go to Memphis if they threaten your life? And Dr. King, he said, John, he said, I have to go to Memphis, Tennessee to help those to stand up that can stand up on their own. Turkey Cypriots today won't be participating, sadly, in the London Olympics, which is, which is, which is quite sad for Turkey Cypriots. How do you think we can you know, roll down and break those barriers so that hopefully for Rio in, in four years' time we can see Turkey Cypriots there as well? It's really sad when people who are good at sport um, and you know they don't get the opportunity to do sport um, because you know we can't all be sort of a level students or geniuses in universities and things and sometimes sport gives them that pathway to find their own sort of like achievement and success and, and various things like that and I think for that to be taken away and not given the chance it's a very very sad thing indeed. If we look at the example of the Turkey Cypriots yeah. and the fact that they're excluded because of politics. That's right. I mean, what can we do to change that? Yeah. Well, again, I don't, I don't mind. I don't care whether you're African-American, black British, Turkish, uh, Turkish Cypriot. Look, the lesson is the same. Unless you fight for your rights, for your human rights, collectively, powerfully, nothing changes. And I know your struggle. I've supported it as you've supported the, the broader black struggle. Yeah. We're in this together. And uh, we've always uh, extended a hand of solidarity uh, to your community to help you confront the persistent inequalities. It's not right, and together we'll defeat it. Okay, Simon, we wish you every success Thanks with very tonight's much. And enjoy, enjoy this evening too. We will, thank you. You could hear the pan fall through the air before it dropped. It was very, 80,000 people, it was very quiet. And I heard Lee Evans in the stand said, oh my very clear, like it was just a part of that pin that, of the waves of it flying through the air. Well, I again was with some other people that were sitting right up in the stands, directly in front of the, of the victory stand. And I was just sick. My opinion was not colored by anybody else. Each of these athletes gave me 110%. They were loyal to me. They did their job, they were great guys. 
I just think that what people should think about that 200 meter race in Mexico City is that Tommy broke the world record by three tenths of a second and it was a tremendous event. There haven't been too many of those kinds of things where someone would make such a quantum leap on a world record. And when I talk to people and we talk about track and field, the 200 meters in Mexico City, I have yet in all these years had anyone tell me what they thought of it, what tremendous performance that he put on. And I made the statement when they came to me, what did you think? I said, I thought it was a social statement that addressed some problems that had to be addressed. It had nothing to do with the Olympic Games, had nothing to do with me as a coach, had nothing to do with the sport. It had everything to do with society. It was a real privilege meeting the likes of Tommy Smith and Tessa Sanderson. I hope Turkey Cypriot sportsmen and women watching this video will draw inspiration from the fact that someone like Tommy put absolutely everything on the line for a political cause that he believed in. I didn't go to Mexico City to become uh, famous in, in terms of making a lot of money or that history falling down into society as something great. I went to make a, make a statement and leave. So after the event happened, you know, they forced me back home where there was you know, no job, no money, nothing but school, which I finished. I used those gloves for warmth. Well, that's what gloves are. In the wintertime, January, February in the San Jose was down to 35 degrees, so I used them. And I remember the last time I used it, I had a 1965 Nova. I didn't drive Ferraris back here. Young folks drive now. <laughs> I had an old 65 Nova that, that barely started. So I took them off and threw them in the back seat of the car. Now, the car didn't start the next morning. I mean, the car hadn't started since then. I think the gloves had something to do with it, maybe. And, and I sold the car. I gave, in fact, I gave the car to my youngest son later on down the line. And it disappeared. I mean, it's just gone.